All right, finishing up these notes. So we are again going to be simplifying these expressions. So I'm going to start with what's inside my parentheses first. 7 over 14, that is going to reduce to be 1 over 2. X to the 2 thirds, this is X to the 1, which I can write as 3 over 3. So 3 over 3 minus 2 over 3 leaves me with X to the 1 third. And then y to the 3 fourths and y to the 1 fourth, negative 1 fourth. So that means I'm going to have to move it to the top. So that's going to be 3 fourths plus 1 fourth, which is 4 over 4 or 1. So that's y over 2x to the 1 third cubed. So now I need to distribute that cubed everywhere. So y cubed, 2 cubed is 8 x to the one third times three, that's gonna be three over three, which is just one. So there's my result for 43. 44, I'm gonna rewrite, focus, I'm gonna rewrite this term in the bottom. I've got x plus y to the three fourths over y, x plus y to the one fourth. So these are like terms and I can subtract their exponents. So Three over four minus one over four, that's two over four, which is also one half. So that's the square root. So X plus Y to the one half, which is also the square root of X plus Y. Both of those would be correct. 45, last one. I'm looking at the square root of the cubed root of X. So let's rewrite this. Um, let's start from the inside out, putting this in exponential form. So that's the square root of X to the one third. And then again, I'm going to put this in exponential form. So that's going to be to the one third raised to the one half power. So I'm multiplying these exponents. So one over three times one over two is going to give me X to the one sixth power, which is also the sixth root of X. All right, so now we're going to move on to something a little different. And we're going to be talking about the domain of our radical functions. So when we have an odd root, um, it's all real numbers because we can take roots of negatives. But when we have an even root, our um, value inside our radical has to be greater than or equal to zero because we can't take square root, fourth root, sixth root, et cetera, of negative values. So in 46, I have the square root. So that means that what's inside my radical has to be greater than or equal to zero. So to find the domain, I'm going to set six minus X greater than or equal to zero. And we're going to rearrange this to solve for X. So I can add X to the other side. And so X has to be less than or equal to six. I'm going to rewrite that so that it's reading from left to right. X is less than or equal to six. That's the domain for 46. Then looking at 47, I have a cube root, which is an odd root. And so that means I can have negative values but I have it in a denominator. And we have a restriction about the denominator being that it can't have zero. So X in this case just cannot be zero. All right, last part, this is the inverse properties. And we've kind of already done some practice with that, but that is that if we are taking the nth root and raising it to the n power for an odd value, it matches whatever number is inside of that uh, radical. So if it's negative, it's a is negative. When it's even, it's the absolute value, meaning that it's always positive. So here, 48, cubed root of seven to the third power, that's gonna cancel out and give us seven. Now here, cubed root of negative two cancels out, gives us negative two. 50, square root of seven squared, seven. Even root, absolute value, seven, positive seven. Square root of negative three squared, again, it's gonna be the absolute value, so positive three. And lastly, 52, square root of negative three. This actually is not, um, that's actually also going to be positive three, because remember, always um, the absolute value. And that will wrap up those notes.